Well, everyone's here but Pam, and she's sick, and then Shannon. Well, Shannon was invited, wasn't she? Yes, we gave her an invitation last week. I knew Shannon wouldn't come. This party's too tame for her. Oh, I don't know. She told June she was coming. But why should she come? There aren't any boys here. Shannon. Why, it was only two weeks ago when I became Laura Leader that I first heard her name. Hi, Marva. How's the cross go? Oh, I had a guest for the first night. Oh, you'll get on to it. I hope you enjoy your work in mutual as much as I do. You know, the Laurels are a good class. They're so attentive and easy to get along with. But there is one small problem. What problem? Shannon Leroy. Oh, yes, Shannon. The girls tell me she hasn't been attending class. The problem is, when Shannon does come to class, she's usually the center of interest. And Sister Walker just seems to be unable to cope with her. Doesn't sound to me as if she's even interested in the class. That's about it, Marva. But we must try to get all of our girls active and keep them active. If you should need some help, feel free to call on me. <laughs> Rest assured, I'll call on you. Oh, you're busy. I'll answer, Sister Gregory. Thank you, Judy. Oh, hello, Shannon. Hi, Judy. It looks like this is the right place, Steve. Thanks for bringing me over. Sure, doll. See you tomorrow. Same time. Good night, dear. Good night. Hi, girl. Hello, hey. Shannon. Hi there. So that's Shannon. Haven't you met Shannon before, Sister Gregory? No, I haven't. We haven't been in the ward long enough for me to meet all the girls yet. Just a minute, and I'll run in and welcome her. Hello, Shannon. Hello. I'm Sister Gregory, your new Laura leader. Welcome to our home, and welcome to our Get Acquainted party. I thought that it's you... It's nice to meet you, <laughs> Mrs. Gregory. I've, um visited most of the girls, and I've been looking forward to calling on you. Perhaps you and I Thank could... you, Mrs. Gregory, but you needn't bother. I do come once in a while. Oh, hi, Joan. Hi. Uh, will you excuse me? Shannon did attend class. Whenever she thought there was nothing more important to do. It seemed like I ran into Shannon everywhere after that except in my Laurel class. Oh, she'd come out for a while. Then I wouldn't see her again for several weeks. I'd call her on the phone, visit her, and write her little notes. But I just could not seem to keep her active. Indian summer came and went, and still Shannon only attended class once in a while. Helen? Just back from meeting Sister Gregory. Susan? All three. Paula? All three, Sister Gregory. Judy? All three. Now, Shannon, what meetings did you attend this week? Well, at least I'm here tonight. <laughs> girls, girls, may I please have your attention? Since we had to postpone our laureling ceremony last month, we'll really have to get busy on it this month. If you're all agreed, we'll work out the details tonight. Let's see, we have to make invitations to mail to your mothers, decide on the refreshments, and we must plan to make the Relief Society room just look as lovely as possible. Oh, by the way, Linda, I'd like to see you after class about decorations. When I talked to Linda concerning decorations, she asked for Shannon to help her. She said Shannon had lots of ideas along this line. Here was the opportunity I'd been waiting for, the chance to get Shannon into activity. Hello, Shannon. This is Sister Gregory. How are you? Good. Shannon, Linda tells us that you're very good with ideas on decorating. We'd like to have you decorate for our laureling ceremony. That was nice of Linda, but I really can't make it. Uh, Mother will be out of town, and I'm afraid I won't be there. 
Thanks anyway, Mrs. Gregory. Bye. Present beauty, lustrous pearls of immeasurable worth to all women. Those who seek us will find us in purity and self respect, health and cleanliness, cheerfulness, appreciation. Let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly, then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of thy God. That which is beautiful is good, that which is good will become beautiful. represent pearls of wisdom by seeking that which is praiseworthy and of good report. We add pearls of faith and humility, knowledge and integrity, industry, dependability. The scripture says, seek not for riches but for wisdom, and behold the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto you, and then shall you be made rich. Behold, he that hath eternal life is rich. We represent love, laurel pearls of great value. We add to life's treasures these pearls of great price. Understanding and friendship, service, reverence, charity, kindness. Jesus said, by love, serve one another. I'd give anything if Shannon were here. I wonder where she could be. Hi, honey. Oh, no, not again. Well, we're just trying to save a little money. Sure, we can fix it, Mom. Look at this, a do-it-yourself book. Yeah, Mom. The last time you fellows tried to save us money, it cost us $40. Hey, what are you boys doing at this time of night anyway? What's in the box? Cake. Oh, boy! And if you want a piece, you have to go to bed right now. Well, I don't know how Dad can get along without me, but for a piece <laughs> of cake. Oh, boy, chocolate! Your favorite. You deserters, here. <laughs> oh, how those girls eat. I don't know how they eat so much. Here, you're just lucky. I hid the pieces for you or you wouldn't have any. I think I'll join the laurels. <laughs> okay, honey, here's your piece of cake. Mmm, that's good. Brush your teeth and say your prayers. Good night. You want a piece? Yeah. Good night, dear. Good night, Mom. You have a piece, dear? No, thanks. Well... How'd it go tonight? Oh, it was wonderful. Those girls are so sweet at that age. They're just blossoming the lovely young women. Frankly, I was quite proud of them. Oh, would you have a piece of cake? I'll get a plate. No, no, thank you, honey. I don't think I care for any. Too near bedtime. Well, were they all there tonight? Yes. Even Terry's mother came, and she didn't think she could make it till the last minute. No, I take it back. Shannon and her mother weren't there. I guess she didn't think it was important enough. How are you two getting on these days? Oh, I just... I just can't get close to her. Oh, I'm so afraid we're going to lose her. The bishop called a special meeting and asked us to take a survey on all the girls who don't attend meetings regularly, and then maybe the teachers could help them. But how do you help a girl like Shannon? Well, don't give up, honey. I've tried everything I can think of to try to interest that girl. Oh, Ray, maybe I just wasn't cut out to be a teacher. Honey, that's awfully good cake. Could I have just another little piece? I certainly get a lot out of these state leadership meetings. 
Sister Cheney inspires me to do much more for my girls. Say, speaking of your girls, have you been able to do anything with Shannon yet? Shannon's a real problem, Mary. I don't know what to do. She has so much leadership ability. She has the potential to be anything she wants to be. I'll say this for her. She's a real challenge. Teaching isn't easy, Marva, but it is rewarding. It's up to us to have the love and the understanding and the patience that's required to teach. Somehow I know you'll find a way to get close to this girl. It'll come. Just don't lose hope. As we decided last week, girls, we're going to draw names tonight for a little inexpensive Christmas gift. To make our choice a little bit easier, why don't you put your names and your hobbies and interests on this same piece of paper? Now, your name's all in the box. This is your last chance. Okay, here we go. Now, if you draw your own name, why raise your hand? Because it wouldn't be any fun to give yourself a gift, would it? <laughs> Will you pass this on back? Okay, girls, now we agreed as a class that we wouldn't let anyone know whose name we drew. We want this to be a complete surprise. Hey, no fair. If you tell, it won't be any fun. Gregory. Thank you. Shannon Leroy. Hobbies, dancing, clothes, and boys. <laughs> What who's done? Shannon. She's engaged. That 16-year-old child came to Mutual tonight wearing a diamond so big she almost needed a crutch. Oh, what can her parents be thinking of? I suspect they're not thinking. Who's she marrying? His name is Stevie, and he's 21, and he has yummy blue eyes. When she flashed that diamond, I could just feel little waves of green envy going all around that class. They're going to be married in the summer in front of her mother's rose-banked fireplace. And then Stevie's going to buy a car and take her to Mexico on a honeymoon. But you're letting this thing upset you something. Of course I am. How am I going to teach those girls to wait for the right man and get married in the temple when everything that girl does makes me look like I'm all wrong? Right. And since the dance is being held in our ward recreation hall, the laurels and the end signs have been assigned to the decorations. Now, we'll work on those decorations for the next three weeks after the lessons in our respective classes. <laughs> Let's uh, leave the choice of the decorations chairman up to Sister Gregory and the Laurels, and uh, I'll volunteer the services of our committee here to do all the heavy work. <laughs> now, are there any suggestions for decorations? And uh, please, remember the budget. Brother Tremaine? Yes, Denny? I think we should get a permit from the Forest Service and go out and cut our own Christmas tree. The snow's deep enough now. Hey, let's make it a snow party. My uncle has a bobsled we can use. Well, that's a good idea, Susan. Why don't you get together with these fellows and plan the details? Say, next week, we're going to announce the decorations chairman for the Christmas ball. Is there anything else, Brother Tremaine? No, that's all I have. 
But let's go into the activity now, and we'll see you here in class next week. <laughs> probably be out in the foyer. I think I'll go hang it up right now. It's a good idea. We'll see you later. Meet you in the activity. Mrs. Gregory? Oh, yes, Shannon? I'd like to do the decorations. Why, Shannon, how nice of you to volunteer. Shannon was in charge of our sophomore slide decorations last year. She's really good. I'm sure she is. Well, it's settled then. but I've been working on the railroad. Oh, not at Christmas time. Let's have Shannon and Sue do the number they did on the assembly. Oh, that's a good idea. Shannon, come on. 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 get acquainted with your husband. Oh, I don't think you'd be interested in my romance. Oh. 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 Well, once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're ahead of the story. It wasn't me by any means. But before I was married, I had a beautiful bay mare named Princess. Oh. One day, she ran away to the hills. And Ray and a cousin with whom he was staying caught her for me. I'll never forget how gallant, how handsome he looked as he rode back on my horse. That was the first time I ever saw him. And as he handed me the reins, our hands touched and our eyes met. And you know something? We got the message. And you were married soon after that? Oh, no. 
I didn't even give him a date for two full weeks after that. How long did you go with him, Sister Gregory? Let's see. We went together, not steady, but quite often for just about a year. Then Ray went on his mission. And when he returned, we were engaged for, oh, about six months before we got married. What makes a successful marriage, Sister Gregory? Oh, many things. But first, I'd say, get to know your partner really well. Become genuine friends. And by that, I mean that you should have similar interests and similar backgrounds and be able to talk intelligently about the basic things of life, not just what the latest hip tunes are or which orchestra is the smoothest, but you should really understand everything that marriage means. Then your love is built upon mutual interest and understanding and not just on physical attraction alone. Why, with a background like this, you wouldn't consider anything but a temple marriage. Sister Gregory. Well, how does it look? Shannon, I, I'm practically speechless. I didn't know this hall could look so lovely. Thank you, Sister Gregory. I believe it is beginning to shape up. I'm awfully glad you took over the decoration, Shannon. You've made a real contribution. Shannon, we need you for a minute. Be right there. Will you excuse me, Sister Gregory? Sure. Marva, you and the girls have done a wonderful job. I think this is the loveliest the hall has ever looked. Oh, thanks, Mary. Just shows what those kids can do if their heart's really in it. You're certainly doing well with the laurels, and we appreciate it, all of us. By the way, how are you getting along with Shannon? Where is she? I'd like to congratulate her. I don't know. She should be here for the applause. Everyone's raving about the decorations. But it isn't like her not to show up at all tonight when she's done such a wonderful job as decorations chairman. Hello, Ray. Nice to see you, Mary. Well, hi, hi, honey. How nice. I didn't expect you for at least another hour. Well, I was able to get away a little earlier than I thought. Good. I didn't realize it was so late. Excuse me, I promised Sister Walker I'd help her with the punch. If I don't see you two before the holidays, let me wish you a very Merry Christmas. Same to you. Thank you, Mary. Say, would you like your Christmas present early this year? Present? Why, yes. Uh, may I have this dance? Christmas was almost on us, and I still hadn't found a gift for Shannon. If I could just do something to make her accept me as a friend. As I stood in the snow, I prayed again that somehow Shannon might realize the laurel ideal of womanhood and make those ideals her own. I prayed so hard that she wouldn't throw everything away in an unwise, early marriage. 
And then I saw what I'd been looking for. I didn't even ask the price. It was perfect. Dear Shannon, for all that you value most highly, I send this little box from one who treasures you. A friend. down to the store for a couple of things. Would you drop this off at Shannon's for me? All right, be glad to. Be sure and put it between the front door and the screen and don't let anyone see you. I wanted to have it for Christmas morning. All right. Thanks. See you in a couple of minutes. Okay. Hurry back, we want to hang up our stockings. Keep you warm this winter. Boy, you sure got some neat shoes. Yeah, we're sure lucky. Gee, this is the best Christmas I ever had. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Did you get everything you wanted, Mary? Man, this is all I wanted. Hey, Mary, we haven't given Mom a real present yet. Hey, that's right, Al. Let's get it. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. Here's oh. a present for you, Mom. For me? Yeah, Mom, open it. Oh. I can hardly wait. Wait, that's lovely. Uh, what is it? It's a cat stove, Mom. Just what I needed. See, I told you she'd like it. Yeah, we sure can pick them. We fooled you both, didn't we? You uh -huh. sure did. Let's go try out my sleigh. Okay, little buddy. Nice of you to stop by. Let me have your coat. Did you have a lovely Christmas? Uh -huh. What's the matter, Shannon? Mrs. Sister Gregory, I got the little box you sent me. I knew it was from you. So. So I wanted to thank you. I'm glad you liked it. But I'm sorry if it made you cry. <laughs> Sister Gregory, do you know what I got for Christmas this morning? <laughs> My mother gave me a new dress. And Daddy gave me a check. And you gave me that little box. I went, I went to put my treasures in, like you said on the card. 
And do you know, I only had two treasures, two real treasures. My laurel necklace and that little card you gave me with a laurel leaf on it. I didn't have another thing that was really important. I realized all of a sudden how very poor I was. That night, when we were up at the lodge and you were telling us about your marriage, I realized that Steve and I didn't have it. Oh, Sister Gregory, I wanted to come to that dance. I wanted to see how the hall looked and have fun with the other kids. Why didn't you come, Shannon? Steve didn't want to go. He said church stuff was stupid. I gave him back his ring. See? I want to be like other girls. And like you. I'll help you, Shannon. I'll help you to be better than I am. We women have to work together and depend on our Heavenly Father. Oh, Shannon. Shannon.